Welcome again to All Graphic Supplies. I'm Clyde D'Souza, and today I'm going to be talking to you about on-demand DTG. It's a very exciting segment of the business today, especially since people want to be able to send something customized printing on all kinds of different things such as t-shirts, hoodies, uh, bags, and other fabric products. So that's what? We're going to do a demo, we're going to do a live demo, and I'm quickly going to be able to show you a couple of solutions over here that will allow you to use this equipment very easily uh, either in your facility as well as in your home or any place else. So let's go and do a demonstration today. So come along with me. So what we have here is an entire wall uh, based on things that you can print on apparel. This is on-demand DTG. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the heat press. We're going to talk about the software. We're going to talk about this very exciting machine. It's called the Texture Echo 2 today in this presentation. As well, we'll be pre-treating on this machine over here. It's called the Viper Max, which is also a very fantastic machine. So what we're going to talk about is a number of different things that will allow you to run a successful DTG on-demand operation. And uh, some of the things that I think are necessary to ensure that everything works out well for you. All right, so some of the considerations that you will have to take are things like the type of pretreatment liquid that you're gonna use, uh, and they come in a variety of sorts depending on the printer that you're using and uh, the recommendation. Uh, also, in this particular machine, we have some uh, different platen sizes. These are platen sizes that can be changed quite easily on the machine depending on what you're printing, whether it be shoes, um, in this particular case, or you know, hoodies or baby clothes like for this one over here, or uh, you know, sleeves like this, and so forth, okay? Uh, as well, you can change the platen to extra large or small and such like things like that. And it's pretty easy to be able to change that. In this particular machine, it's literally as simple as uh, it's magnetically attached, and this is the standard size, and you literally can pull that off, and there you go, and you'll replace it. There's literally four spots on the bottom that sit on these four magnetic spots and positions, and you simply would line that up, like you see over here, and you put it down, and you're good to go, and you're ready to start printing. Okay, so we're also gonna talk a little bit about inks, and the sizes of inks, and the types of inks that you may be using, and as well, how we can add something in the software and print it. So I'm gonna show you a quick demonstration of first a dark t-shirt, a light t-shirt printed on this machine, and then you tell me what you think of that, okay? So here we go. So I'm gonna be first talking to you about the Viper Max. What I love about this machine, it's very easy to use. It comes with a touch screen, and there are basically three little segments over here. The first segment here is where you would choose um, the size of the actual pretreatment area. So in this case over here, these are some of the presets. There are four of them. One is for full chest, one is for left chest, one is for youth garment, as well as one for a sleeve. You can add up to 30 of these different and they're very easy to do, very easy to set up. In this particular case today, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna be setting up, um, you know, to print 12 inch by 12 inch which is over here, and this is number preset seven. So when you look at this preset and you would have entered in this 12 inch by 12 inch size, uh, this is what we're gonna be printing. Over here on this page, it'll show you in this kind of blue icon what it is actually gonna do. So for argument's sake, if I was to choose to this place here, um, it'll tell you where uh, this would appear on the yellow platen that's in this case right over here, okay? and. Uh, if it was on the sleeve, for example, it would move around this little blue block to show you that it's going to print the sleeve over there. Okay, so simple as that. And uh, in this case, I'm going to go back to number seven because that's what we're going to do. Um, here's what it tells you what the size is. And then in this particular case here, it tells you how much pre-treatment liquid it's going to use. So it's either for white garment. If you choose white, you, you choose this first one. It shows you it's putting down a 10% lay down. If it was for a light garment, it's 35, as you can see there. It's a colored garment, it's 45. Or in this particular case where I'm gonna be showing you a black garment, I'm simply just gonna choose uh, black or dark and 65. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. So one of the processes that we do is we will take a shirt and to ensure that the shirt's ready to be pre-treated, we're gonna take any moisture out of it. And so for 10 seconds, we're gonna take the shirt before we go ahead and pre-treat it. And, uh, Okay, so I'm going to take the shirt over here and I'm literally going to place it in my heat press and I'm going to preheat it for approximately 10 seconds to take any moisture out of the shirt. 
Currently this is set to 320 degrees Fahrenheit and for 10 seconds I'm going to do that and then I'm going to go ahead and pre-treat that. What ideally is uh, I'm attempting to do here is take out any moisture that is in the shirt before I go ahead to the pre-treating process. Okay, there you go. And now my shirt is ready. It's nice and flat and I can take it and place it into the pre-treatment machine, which is the Viper Max. And literally I am ready to do that. Okay, I'm going to ensure that I'm pre-treating onto a 12 inch by 12 inch area. It's preset number seven. It shows me the blue square in relation to the yellow base as well. I'm changing, I'm pre-treating a dark garment at 65%, which it shows over here. And then literally I go ahead and press this green button and it will pre-treat the garment. Very easy. It's a controlled movement. And uh, depending on the amount of pre-treatment, it'll either go faster or slower, and that'll determine how much pre-treatment is put down on the garment. It's very nice and smooth, as you can see. And now I can go ahead and uh, prepare this ready for printing. So you'll notice that when I grab it, I kind of cross my hands over just so that I can uh, then go ahead and easily place it into the heat press just like that. So we're gonna go over here and we're going to place this in the heat press. Again, I drop down the part of the collar just beyond the platen. And I'm gonna take uh, a sheet of parchment paper. And this parchment paper will help absorb some of the moisture that is in the pretreatment. And generally between 25 to 30 seconds, depending on the amount of moisture or the pretreatment that is inside the shirt. Once this is done, I'm gonna install that in the print uh, on the platen and uh, then we're ready to print. And uh, it's very important that you get your pre-treatment uh, done well, because if there's any inconsistency in the pre-treatment, then you're gonna have inconsistency in uh, the printing, because pre-treatment acts almost like a primer. And if you can imagine, if you were painting the wall, if you don't have a proper primer and you want good color to show up, especially in this case where you want white to show up properly, then uh, you, you wanna have a good pre-treatment. So if you look at this garment, it's now nice and flat, it's ready to go. And uh, this has also flattened the fibers in advance of printing. And therefore you're gonna get the best possible surface that you can print on. Okay, so go ahead, we're gonna take this out. And without touching the surface of the material, uh, in this case here, I'm gonna have to take off the platen. I'm just gonna do that this way. Um, and uh, take this off, drew it, I, I suppose. This wasn't taken off before but I will take it off this way for now. Place it there. And uh, as you can notice, I am not uh, placing this on the actual um, platen. And sometimes I will, sometimes I won't, depending on what I'm doing here. But uh, for this kind of a garment, which is pretty firm, pretty uh, stable, I can do it this way because it won't bubble up. And when you'll notice when I press this down, oops, um, it'll allow me to kind of tighten this up and ensure that uh, there is no um, area of the t-shirt that is high, okay? So when this is done, you put everything underneath so it doesn't come in the way. And I generally will look at the garment just to see if there's any ripples at this level. And uh, if there is any ripple, we'll get rid of it by, you know, tightening up this area here, okay? Once that's done, I'm ready to print and I simply press this button. There's a series of buttons over here, but this button is the one that I would use to ensure that it goes into the actual printer and is ready to print. Okay, so the machine actually has uh, a laser sensor that would detect if the fabric was too high and it'll automatically compensate for that and, and drop down and attempt to go in or it'll give you an error and ask you to uh, realign it and bring it down a little bit so it goes in. Okay, so quickly we're going to go here and we're going to add a job. This is the Digital Factory Apparel software that comes with the Texture Echo. It's a really nice software. And what you see here is different cues. In each one of the cues, there are two ways to print something. So in this case here, you've got black shirts. You can print either graphics or you can add a file to 
uh, photographic uh, images that are for black, or you can choose it for color and the same thing, you can do graphics or photo, or you can do white shirts and you can either choose white graphics and white photos, your choice. In this case, what we're gonna do is we're printing a black t-shirt, that's the Q name, and we're printing, uh, I'll say black graphics for this uh, particular application. I just go in to my type of jobs, and this one here is gonna be called Black Beauty. I'm gonna print it and add it to the queue, and very quickly, it's gonna show up in my first platen, uh, and uh, it'll generate a preview, okay? When it generates a preview, I can then go into the job itself in the job editor and I can choose a size for this. In this case here, I'm gonna choose 28 centimeters because that's the size I wanna print on this particular shirt. And I'm gonna choose the distance from the top being approximately four centimeters, just because that's something that uh, seems to work out well for me. Also, I have a choice of the kind of quality that I'm gonna print. In this case here, I'm gonna print black production. That's the production speed. You can go black quality or black speed or a variety of other choices here. In this case here, I'm choosing black production. And then uh, also just to ensure that I'm printing on the right platen size under page, I can see what it is uh, or the size of the page, which in this case here, it's 34 by 2052, which is uh, approximately 16 by 24 platen size. Okay, so that's ready. I'm ready to print and I just simply select this job and uh, I will go ahead and hit print. When it goes to print, you'll see this kind of ripping the job very quickly and uh, you will begin uh, with the printer activating once that starts printing and you will see this go through the printing process. Okay, so while this is printing, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the printer itself and why uh, we really enjoy this printer. It's very easy to run. And uh, one, what I like about it is that it uses these uh, 140 milliliter cartridges, which are pressurized cartridges. Uh, they're very inexpensive compared to a lot of other devices that are out there. And um, because they're pressurized, there is, uh, there's no worries about their use. As well, uh, you know, they keep pushing the ink to the print head because they're pressurized. The other thing is, as you grow your business, you may find that these cartridges are maybe um, too small or require for you to be able to use more ink on an ongoing basis and you further want to reduce your costs. So this manufacturer also supplies this same cartridge in a refillable option, which is looking somewhat like this. And you basically, for this is a black one, it comes in different colors for CMYK as well as white. And then you can buy the ink in literally one liter containers or larger and literally fill this with the very same machinery. So it's upgradable as you go and you don't end up with too much stock of these cartridges as well. These cartridges, as well as the bulk ink system, if you want to call it that, are very well priced and competitive and allow you to be you know, uh, competitive in the marketplace. So anyways, that's one of the things I like about this. It's easy to maintain. And also these machines are made in Greece. We've have found very, very good support from the manufacturer. Um, and uh, it's, as I said, very easy to change platen. So you can print on shoes, baby clothes, hoodies, uh, bags, and a whole bunch of other cotton canvas and those kind of products. So anyways, this is printing and uh, you'll notice that coming out fairly quickly. Uh, the maintenance on this machine is also very straightforward and easy and I will show you in a subsequent video how to maintain these machines. Uh, as well, uh, there is literally only literally three parts that uh, you, know, you would need to replace on this machine if it ever were to go down. That is the print head. Uh, there's an ink uh, system that is quite easy to replace as well as a capping station. And each one of them can be uh, replaced in the field by you as an end user, depending on where you are. Uh, or we have a full service team to, to resolve these matters. The great thing also about this machine, it comes with a three year part hardware and one year on the ink delivery system, which uh, you know is either 5,000 prints or one year. Okay, so while this continues to print, I will uh, pause speaking and we will accelerate through the rest of the printing process just to uh, you know, go through this. But on average, uh, from a print speed perspective, we've seen anywhere in dark cartridges, dark uh, t-shirts like this, you're printing anywhere between 10 and 20, uh, depending on the size, if you're printing black and uh, color, or uh, you know, somewhere between 20 to 25, 30, if you're just printing CMYK per hour on a machine like this. 
All right. Okay, at the end of this particular white layer that has been put down, uh, I will then come and I will intervene and again press this blue button and this blue button will send the print into the, the platen back into the printer and it'll now then print the MYK. You will notice that the white quality uh, of this particular machine which uses DuPont's white ink is exceptionally white and bright and gives you these exceptional colors that people absolutely love as well as this process. There's one other thing that I need to let you know about, and that is on any DTG printer, one of the big considerations is white ink and ink drying, clogging the heads and those kind of things. And as you know, all graphic supply supplies uh, large printers like the Aeon and some of those more production oriented machines. And it doesn't matter what price of machine you buy, whether it's a half a million dollars plus or more, the environment is critical for DTG printing. So one of the things that we use here, if you'll notice, is I have this little humidifier. Inside here, there's distilled water, and uh, this basically uh, increases the humidity level in the room, and this machine has a humidity level sensor. And the recommended humidity level for DTG printing to ensure that the nozzles don't dry up, especially the white, is approximately 50% or higher. And if you can ensure that environment, then you will be able to have success in your DTG operation. It doesn't matter which machine you're using, whether it's this machine, an AR machine, or any other machine for the most part in the, in the marketplace. So uh, one of the considerations that uh, you can add to this machine is this little humidifier. We bought this one from Walmart. It's pretty inexpensive, and distilled water is uh, what you need to put into it. All right, so here we are, we're going to continue to print the rest of this. And then after this, we're going to go ahead and we're going to print a white shirt. And I'm going to show you how we change over from one pretreatment liquid to another because there's a difference between dark pretreatment and light pretreatment. And each one has its own uh, applications and requirements. And then we're going to print a white shirt over here and show you how that looks, okay? So maybe I'll do that at this point while this is continuing to print and uh, we can then uh, go to the next job. Actually, you know what? We will continue because it's almost done. Okay, so now this is ready. Printed that in pretty short time. And uh, you got this beautiful print that I'm now going to grab again with my hands like so, and you'll see how nice that is. Uh, after I heat press it, we can then zoom in on it and I'll show you what the quality is. And the feel of this is incredible. Okay, so generally I will press this uh, and the recommendation is between 45 to 60 seconds. In this case, I'm going to go 45 because uh, I happen to know the nature of this particular fabric. And uh, you're going to be able to see the kind of quality that we're able to achieve. Uh, you also have to take into consideration that you have to have the proper cure time uh, so that when you wash this garment, it does not wash off prematurely or that the ink hasn't bonded properly with the fabrics. So we're almost there, 15 seconds, and uh, we're ready. I'm going to show you this beautiful piece which we're able to produce for you live. Okay, so here we go. Take that out. Here we go. Just gonna grab the garment and uh, I'm gonna show you that. What I like it about it is the feel. It's very smooth. It doesn't have any bumps in it, no imperfections in the texture and it's very wearable and it can be washed as well. So that shows you a white shirt. So after this, I'm going to uh, show you how we change over the pretreatment liquid so that we can do a light colored shirt. Okay, so let's go here. So that was set to, the machine was set to uh, dark coating 
this is a coating that we use for light colors. You'll see here it says poly coating for light colors or white. And we're gonna simply switch over. So to do that, I generally will pull the tubing which goes into the pump here out of the pretreatment liquid container that we currently have it in, which is for dark, or dark liquid. And uh, once I have it out, I will uh, purge the line. And I can actually reutilize my pretreatment liquid if I use a new cup over here to purge it into. And then I can reuse this pretreatment as opposed to having to waste it. So I'm just going to go ahead and purge that out. As you can see, it'll go out of the line very easy and very quickly until it completely empties out. And when it does, I will again run some uh, distilled water through it. You'll see that'll finish fairly quickly. Okay, and that's it. Once that is done, I generally will uh, pre-filter. It's a micron filter just to see that it's clean, but it doesn't matter. I can then drop it into distilled water. I will take this cup out because this is clean pretreatment liquid and I can return it back to my container so I don't waste it. Okay. And then I have this other cup here. I'll put maybe this cup here because that one's almost full. And I'm going to basically run distilled water through the system so that I can quickly prepare the machine uh, for the next pretreatment liquid that I need. Very quick and easy, as you can see. Once that liquid's gone through, I'm then going to empty it up by uh, simply holding it up like that and running it through the system. And once it's empty, I can then uh, run new pretreatment for the light color through the machine. So it's about as difficult as that to switch from one pretreatment treatment uh, liquid to another. Okay. And as you, when it finishes off, you're good. It's nice and clear. And uh, now I'm ready to do the next one. Always ensure that you cover your pretreatment liquids so they don't dry up on you. And always use good quality pretreatment. So in this case, this is for the light. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that in here and uh, make sure that I have it ready to go. Also, one thing you want to make sure is that ball, that tube does not slide out or kind of come out of the pretreatment. So I kind of just block it in. Uh, just by doing that. And then uh, I'm going to put in the new pretreatment liquid and I'll fill it into a new cup and uh, ensure that I'm now ready to pretreat. So fill it up. There's a little button over here that I use to either purge or fill. And you'll see the pretreatment for the light liquid or for the light shirts come in. And once that is spraying through properly, I check to see that everything is going through the nozzle properly, and then I'm good to go. All right, so now I'm going to take a white shirt, which I'm going to come back here. And if you remember, I uh, will preheat this shirt, or pre-press it, I should say, for 10 seconds, just to take any moisture that's sitting in the shirt. Uh, there's a little mark on this one. I'm not going to worry about it. And I'm just going to go ahead for 10 seconds, take any moisture out of the shirt. All right. Very quick. So you can see the process is pretty uh, manageable, pretty straightforward. And uh, one of the things we like to do is ensure that we train our customers to do this stuff very well. And uh, go ahead and put this on the pretreatment machine, the Viper Max, nice little machine. And uh, this time what we're going to do is we're going to switch over from the 65%, which was for the dark shirt, and we're going to change that to black, sorry, to light shirt, and it shows here as 10. And the size is still going to be the same as previous, which was 12 inches by 12 inches, which is our preset number 7. Assuming that we've got our pretreatment for light in here, we're going to go ahead and pretreat this shirt. You'll notice now that because we're printing only 10% of pretreatment, the head moves at a higher speed. And uh, as such, it's putting down less pretreatment. So then I take the shirt and uh, put it down here. Again, I'm going to use the parchment paper 
Make sure the parchment paper isn't uh, wrinkled or things like that because those wrinkles will appear in your t-shirt. And uh, just remember to ensure that you use parchment paper that is not wrinkled so that you don't see those wrinkles in your shirt. So in this case here, I'm gonna wait for 25 seconds. Uh, 20 seconds is okay, okay because we only had 10% of pre-treatment being put down here. And that's it. All right, so now uh, you'll notice actually there's a little bit of pre, there's a few wrinkles in here from our, you know, parchment paper. So what I will do is I will actually just press it without any parchment paper to take out any of those wrinkles before we print it. And again, I'll give myself maybe five or 10 seconds depending on what's required. Okay, and you can see now it's nice and smooth. All right, so go ahead, put this into the machine on the platen very quickly. Line this up, make sure it's straight. Always ensure that you do not have this part, the collar, on the actual platen itself and ensure that you're nice and centered and then go ahead and uh, place this shirt in there and tighten it up make sure there's no wrinkles there's no parts too high and if you want to double check I always kind of look at it from a level and check to see that there is no parts up as you can see it's much easier to see from this angle and then when you're ready to print you simply press this button, the blue button, and this will take the platen into the printer and um, now you're ready to print. Okay, so let's go to the software in this case here. And we're gonna add a uh, design to the white shirt and we're gonna choose, uh, again, we're choosing white graphics for this purpose. And I'm gonna print uh, this little design here, which is, uh, if you can dream it, you can do it. <laughs> I like it, it's for by Walt Disney. And uh, you basically will add this to the queue. You'll see it show up here in the queue. Uh, the good thing about this, as you're printing, if you're doing uh, many jobs, you can, as you can see, see multiple platens, and you can set up jobs in advance for the next one that's coming up. So for this particular case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose it. Uh, there's a little button here that allows you to see where your location is. Uh, I'm gonna choose my size. In this case, it's 26 centimeters and I'm gonna put it again, um, two centime four centimeters from the top of this shirt, and that's basically ready to print, and uh, that's it. Uh, in this case here, I'm choosing white quality. If I want white production for faster throughput, if it's a straightforward item, that's pretty good. I can do it this way. Um, I'm gonna choose for the purpose of demonstrating just the quality, uh, I'm just gonna choose white quality. And then uh, uh, the the size is 26 by 25. Maybe I'll just make that 24, it's too big. And again, this is four centimeters from the top. Once I'm ready, I'm just gonna simply go ahead and send it to print and we're ready to go. Again, you'll see the status bar of the rip and um, we're gonna start printing. Okay, so here we go. We've got our white shirt printed very quickly and well done. As you can see, it's right there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, press it. And that's it. So 
What's important here is many people ask us about why they see some yellowing on the uh, shirt. Uh, sometimes they see that and the reason normally you will see that is if the pretreatment that you use uh, on a white shirt is that of a dark uh, because the dark generally will sometimes yellow but it's not noticeable on a dark color whereas the one that is designed for light shirts doesn't yellow as well as you don't put that much pretreatment down and therefore you shouldn't be able to see it when you're printing on a light shirt. Okay so this is almost ready and uh, that really is uh, the process of producing good quality on-demand t-shirts, bags, uh, fabric, fashion wear, um, you know, commercial products, uh, hoodies, and a whole bunch of other things. And you can see the quality of that, if I was to put this down here, is incredible. Again, it's very soft, it's very smooth. You don't have any imperfections. And uh, there you go. It's a finished product that you can sell to your customer. You can produce quite a few of these in an hour and things like this. Also over here, you'll see some other applications, other samples of things that we've done with these machines. Um, we've got bags, which are very popular. You've got fashion garments that you can do kind of all over printing with. Uh, as well, you can do baby clothes, you can do uh, shoes, and a whole bunch of other things. So thank you for that. Uh, hopefully you're able to uh, you know, learn a little bit about this. Uh, you're welcome to contact us here at All Graphic Supplies and Spices and uh, we're happy to serve you and uh, help you with your on-demand apparel decoration business. Thank you.